I don't know what to do. Ah. I know. Be yourself, Michael. Just be yourself. Wait a minute. How can I be myself if I don't even know who I am? Ah! Hey, what's up, guys? Michael Nicastro here, and I'm back with one of my weekly spiritual videos where I dive deep into a random topic and I give my opinion. Again, follow me on my spiritual journey. You don't have to agree with everything I'm saying. I actually encourage you to disagree. I want you to think for yourself. That's the most important. Don't listen to me, but think for yourself. Anyway, in this video, I wanna talk about the concept of being yourself. Maybe your friends, family, teachers, they'd be like, oh, don't worry about it. Be yourself, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. And I was thinking about this concept. There's some value to this, but what does it actually mean to be yourself? Have you ever stopped and thought about that? Throughout my development, I haven't really thought about that. In this video, I am not going to provide you with an easy step-by-step -step process in order for you to find out who you are as a person. There's different ways to come to a common goal. I strongly believe that. But what I will say, I believe this is the big issue in making it difficult to figure out who you are as a person is that society conditions us. You're born, you're raised by your parents, you go to school, you're obedient, you listen to the teacher, you do your homework, if you don't do your homework, you get in trouble. You can't talk when the teacher's talking. And then you go to college, you study hard, and then you find a nice job. You meet a partner, get married, buy a house, buy a car, go on a honeymoon, voila, this sort of thing, right? And there's some value to this. I'm not saying it's bad. This is like the mainstream idea of success. And this is something that even when I was growing up, this cookie cutter life, I wanted to attain this because I thought it was the right thing to do. Society conditions you they program you throughout the years from your childhood into how you should be how you should live your life also it's important to note that the longer you do something consistently the more you begin to embody that identity say you're an accountant but you don't really like accounting you've been doing it for 10 years over time you just get used to it you invest a lot of time energy and money into being an accountant into living this lifestyle that it's hard to turn back it's hard to reinvent yourself it's hard to adjust after investing so much time into being an accountant but in your heart you truly didn't want to be an accountant you can still get out you can still always reinvent yourself and you'd be like michael you're entitled okay i do have a degree of entitlement living with my parents now but that doesn't mean that you can't take small steps in order to change your situation, in order to reinvent yourself. Small things, not big things, don't quit your job. Maybe it's a side hustle, like you like painting, start drawing pictures in your free time instead of going to the bar and getting drunk. There it is, boom. Okay, so that's how society conditions us. Another way in which we are pre-programmed or conditioned is through our childhood trauma or even adult life. And that sort of trauma can stick with you for a long time. An example of trauma would be, this is a personal example, when I was younger, I was labeled as learning disabled. I had trouble reading. I couldn't say words like three. I would say tree. So I had a speech impediment. I couldn't read. In second grade, when I was staring out the window because I couldn't pay attention to the class, and I was playing with my desk and like building forts and drawing S's on my paper, the second grade teacher said that I needed to go to resource room, which was like a supplementary class outside of the normal class where I'd be paired with a private teacher and she'd give me private instruction. So at that time, I felt like an outcast. I felt like I wasn't part of the group. I wasn't with the other students. I wasn't learning with the other students. I felt like I didn't have any friends. I've held on to that for a long time. Even in my adulthood, I felt like I'm an only child too. And I tend to like to do a lot of things by myself, but I also find that I'm needy sometimes. So I believe that this comes from the idea of wanting to fit into a group. In retrospect, joining Resource Room was one of the best things because those teachers really brought out the best in me. I didn't realize that until later. From that trauma, for the longest period of time, I was a quiet, shy person. So that's how my trauma continued with me into my later years. So society, programming, as well as your trauma, trauma can really influence how you identify yourself. Now, I'm not saying that I'm fully enlightened and I know who I am 150%, but I feel like I am more grounded in who I am as a person. I have a better sense of what makes me tick and how I feel and my emotion. But when I was younger, I was learning the process and I was influenced by the greater masses. I'll give you an additional two examples of my journey when I was younger in terms of going against who I was as a person and then realizing that this is not what I wanted. So when I was younger, 
My parents fortunately enrolled me in a lot of sports. I played baseball from a young age, even when I was a short fat kid, and I played on like three teams, travel team, little league, the school team, I played during the summer, I played during the fall, I played all the time. I began to self-identify as an athletic person. And when I went to high school, I played all sports. I played football, baseball, wrestling, all from middle school, so seventh grade, up until my junior year of high school. I was labeled as the jock. I thought I was cool. All my, my friend group was, you know, all the sporty people in high school. Those were the people that I was hanging out with. Those are the people that I was identifying with. And I did enjoy playing sports. They taught me a lot. But at the core, I felt like I didn't want to be playing all the sports. I was just playing the sports because I wanted to fit into this group, this friend circle. You see what I'm saying? I didn't actually want to play all the sports. I didn't want to do wrestling. I had to watch what I was eating. I did not want to do that when I was younger. So it wasn't until my junior year of high school where I realized I didn't want to play sports all the time. I didn't need to necessarily be part of this group. Sure, I enjoyed playing sports and the camaraderie and staying physically active, but I wanted to do other things. I decided to quit quit football, quit wrestling, focus on studying for the SATs, which I still did badly in, as well as take more time for myself. I started practicing Chinese. I joined student government. I became the treasurer, even though I can't do math. I tried different things. I began taking an interest in dressing more professionally to go to school. I was wearing button down shirts. First, a lot of people were making fun of me. A while later, I kept being me. I kept doing my thing. And then people started copying me. They started wearing button down shirts as well. I was the best dressed male in my my senior year. At the time, I felt conflicted because I stopped doing something that I was doing for many years. You know, I developed a bond with these people, the coaches and the players, my friends. Like, I developed a bond. So, of course, I felt conflicted sometimes. Like, why did I quit? Ultimately, in my core, I felt like I was doing the right thing for myself in venturing out and exploring these other avenues of myself and not necessarily doing the popular thing. You see what I'm saying? So, that's an example of me realizing. So, I really did give it a go. And then after a while, I was like, you know what? This is not who I am as a person so I decided to change but a lot of people and I've done this with certain things in my life just continue to stay the course when they don't enjoy it anymore because you begin to take on that identity another example of me not knowing who I was and then figuring it out back to my adolescence when you're younger you want to make friends you just want to fit in I didn't want to speak Chinese when I was growing up I was ashamed to speak Chinese my grandmother my papa if you've seen come come with videos with us we've been cooking I really didn't value the time that I spent with her I didn't want to be around her I, I didn't want to learn how to cook from her because I was just following what my friends were doing, which was like walking in the neighborhood, getting pizza, partying on the weekend, drinking alcohol. Usually when you drink something, you don't actually like the taste. Like I remember my first drink, like I was like, this tastes horrible. But after being in that social environment with different people and trying it several times, you begin to get comfortable with drinking. And that's how a habit is formed. There was a period of my time, high school into college, where I tried to be cool and fit into the group and go out and drink and party and stuff. But I realized when I was at these specific venues, whether it be a club or a bar or whatever, that I always felt out of place. I always felt shy. And awkward. I always felt like I didn't fit into this group and I didn't want to be there. Like I would get to the venue and be like, I want to leave. And at the time I thought I was just socially awkward, but I realized now that I could read the energies of that room and I didn't want to be around people necessarily that were screaming high and on drugs and alcohol. It didn't make me feel good. I realized after some time, and some of you, you're going to pick up things sooner. Some of you are going to be later, but it's all part of the journey that I didn't want to necessarily have to drink to socialize. When I was in my early early 20s, I had trouble meeting the social group that I wanted. I realized that I'm passionate about bringing people together around food and beverage. I wanted to meet people that also shared the same interests and I had trouble meeting these people at bars and nightclubs. Instead, I formed my own meetup group on meetup.com called New York City Young Food Lovers where I curated group dinners at various ethnic restaurants around New York City. So we had a Chinese restaurant, a Russian restaurant, Spanish restaurant, African restaurant. I planned the event. Each restaurant would be centered around a certain theme and through this process, I met some lifelong friends as well as some acquaintances that helped plan additional dinners to like a Russian restaurant. My Ukrainian friend helped plan that. We went to a Thai restaurant, went to an Italian restaurant. This is how I did the unconventional thing, followed my heart. There wasn't a group for me, but I made my own group. 
And again, this is after a couple of years of hitting the bars, the nightclubs and, and drinking. So these are instances of me not knowing who I was and then figuring it out. But the real kicker here, this is the main takeaway of the video. And I said this in my last video, six steps to improve your mental health is to not care what other people think of you. I wish I really understood this when I was younger. So don't care what other people think. Let go of what other people are telling you. Of course, sometimes it's right. Your identity cannot be defined by me, by your parents, by your teachers. You are your own unique, special person. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. People told me I was mentally disabled. Am I mentally disabled? No. And the idea of just being yourself and letting go of being your authentic self, I think it also has to do with a lot of social dynamics. We're social beings and every environment has different social norms attached to it. When you're with your parents, when you're working with your boss, when you're with your friends, you usually act differently around these people. There's social constructs like you're not going to be screaming in a business meeting or you're not going to be cursing at your parents. You might be cursing with your friends. The point here, are you putting on a front or a mask? A mask. Are you putting on a mask and trying to be somebody else in these different social environments? Or are you being yourself and are you just adapting to the social environment? You see I'm saying that that's important rewind the video and watch that again there's a lot of YouTube videos out there or like advice and it's good but some of them they rely on techniques like say three things and you'll make the girl fall in love with you like that those things can work but I believe they have to come from an authentic place when I was younger and going to the bars and the nightclubs I wasn't confident in myself this is another important thing letting go and being confident of yourself I wasn't confident in myself so when I would try to talk with girls I would be like the best dressed person in the room blazer tie everything to cover up the fact that I wasn't confident because I was a server in a restaurant and I felt subconscious so when I would talk to the girls they would feel my energy I didn't trust myself I remember looking online or, or like a book I don't know like techniques how to talk to girls like one of them was like buy a girl a drink so I, I went ahead and I bought a girl a drink and keep in mind this was when I wasn't confident wasn't being my authentic self it didn't work so I bought the girl a drink and she didn't want to talk to me she basically just left uh, quickly so I'm not saying that buying a girl a drink doesn't work. You have to be comfortable and confident with yourself for any of these techniques to work. A lot of people rely on external things to boost their confidence, whether it be clothes, their car, their job. And this kind of inflates your ego to make you feel like a better person. And then when you go to a social gathering, you're just talking about your job or you're just talking about your car or you're just talking about how much money you have. This is not who you are as a person at your core. This is just your ego go talking if you communicate that to me I do not want to talk to you I'll just like leave because I'm at a different frequency level we won't resonate we won't be on the same channel right now when I was younger sure I, I would connect with you because I'd be into that surface level stuff but your car your clothes that can all be taken away so that's not who you are as a person another thing that I became curious about is we're so conditioned to say how are you doing by default people usually just answer good I'm good or okay. They could be feeling bad, but they'll give a default good. Or they could be feeling amazing and they'll just be good. So why not express how you feel as a person? Why not be transparent? And of course, keeping in mind the social environment. How about just being yourself? Three main points, I'm, I'm liking what I'm saying. Okay, this video too, I prepared some notes, but I'm not reading it verbatim off here. I'm letting it flow and I'm building on what I'm saying. It's just flowing naturally. So you might think this video stinks or it's good. Wait, what's my point? My point is I'm delivering an authentic message and the three points that I wanna reiterate is to one, stop trying to be like other people. Two, embrace your authentic self. And three, speak your truth. In order to be yourself, there's no crystal clear way in order to figure that out. There's a process, there's a journey. But if you begin to embody those themes, I believe that it will help in figuring out who you are as a person. So then you could finally go out and really be yourself. It's as easy as that. I'm about to end this video, but this reminds me of when I was serving in a New York City restaurant and the managers used to track each server's check average for like a three month period. They would check the average of the guest checks for each server. So I remember for a particular time period, my check average was the highest out of all servers. And my check average is always high because you know I was passionate about it, I always do a good job. People ask me like, Michael, how is your check average so high? What did you do? And I told them this, I wasn't
wasn't trying to sell. I was just trying to create a great experience for the guests. I was listening to what they wanted. I was showing empathy, understanding, and I was being proactive. I was really passionate about what I was doing. I was being congruent to the process. I wasn't trying to upsell. I wasn't using dark magic to make them buy more things on the menu. I was just giving them what they wanted. If they didn't want to order too much, I wasn't forcing them. If they did order too much, I would say, you know, this is too much. You shouldn't order, you know, this certain dish. I would be transparent with them. And it resulted in the highest check average of this particular period. Anyway, that's kind of off tangent, but I just want to share that with you. I'm not bragging. I just think this video will help you understand like, okay, in the past, I've tried to be like this person. I've tried to do things like this person because I thought it was right. But I hope this video challenges your framework, challenges your conditioning to think about how you want to do things. And I know there's different nuances in each culture, but at the end of the day, we're all the same. These sorts of general things, there's not so much difference. Sure, you can debate me all you want. The main thing, embrace your uniqueness. Be free. And then you can really be yourself. Now you know now you know what being yourself means, I guess. Anyway, if you like this video, my rant video, this was a real rant video. Like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Check out my TikTok. I'm cooking with my grandmother. Check out my cinnamon bun pop-up disco light bakehouse. I'll be coming to your neighborhood. I'm trying to get into the wholesale game. We'll see how that goes. I just doing everything. Okay, I'm really I'm really fortunate with my life right now. I have a lot to be grateful for. Anyway, Wish you health, wealth, love, and happiness. Everyone, be safe. Take care. Peace.